Thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome. Happy Friday, everyone. And thanks for coming and joining this session. Uh, my promise to you guys is we'll, we'll keep the session a little low on tech. I know it's smart tech. Uh, but the whole idea is definitely to demystify how video and social are now almost becoming an intersection of center core, how each brand is using them for their marketing initiatives. Uh, we do understand uh, when we talk about video and social, there is a lot of gameplay which is happening from the creator economy. There is a lot of gameplay which is happening from brands when it comes to driving personalization. But at the same time, uh, we do see that how brands are navigating both of these platforms or I would say channels together to deliver the best ROI. Uh, to, on the today panel, I think we have a diverse panel. Uh, I can really see the mix. Uh, we have uh, across from a consumer category towards talking about BFSI tech side. So I'm really looking forward to see how they bring a lot of insights and inputs and keep you guys engaged. So as we go further in terms of understanding why video and social is becoming so much important and relevant, uh, would definitely would love to understand opinion. Maybe we start from you, Anuja. Uh, as a brand, uh, we have seen your brand maybe using the funnel inventory and starting more from performance. Uh, so what's your opinion? Because a lot of time people see video and social should only be focused on top funnel marketing. So do you think we can leverage as a marketer, not just for top funnel, but bottom funnel as well? And in your experience, have you seen any use cases where video and social have helped you deliver a better ROI? So I think Bharat, firstly, I'd say that uh, you know, spreads across online and offline. Uh, you know, and across a house of brands, so not just Mammoth, but the Domaco and B Blunt and Aquilogica. Uh, and I think our learnings have been tremendous with the use of uh, both social, uh, you know, right across influencers, the, you know, the creators, and equally, I think the use of video, both short format and long format. So um, I definitely say that, you know, we've seen very strong use case and successes uh, with, you know, using relevant video content. Uh, in terms of driving, you know, uh, the full funnel matrices. So, you know, of course, it, uh, you know, it's kind of gotten us a very strong, you know, awareness, brand relevance, and, you know, move the imagery parameters. But equally, you know, it's got, uh, it's been fairly needle moving in terms of driving conversions um, as well. So I, I'm a huge believer, uh, you know, of uh, leveraging authentic, you know, and relevant um, sort of, you know, content pieces. Now, whether that's, partnering with, uh, you know, creators, influencers, or building your own set of, uh, you know, organic content. Uh, but it's definitely, uh, you know, table stakes now. Makes sense. And like you're talking about content, uh, which is also one of the main key element when brands are looking for video and social together. Uh, so I think on the content side, we have now seen the emergence of different type of video concepts. Gone are the days when we were only using videos to drive that emotional connect with consumer. Uh, nowadays, when you talk to any agencies, uh, which type of a video content you are creating, so the brands are definitely looking into behind the scenes video, educational videos, testimonial videos. So maybe, uh, Saikat, in your opinion, uh, how you have seen the transformation of a pure play, organic video gameplay, versus now getting into more of a personalized video based on what consumers are looking from you as a brand? Thanks, Varad. That's a very interesting question. So personalization is something which marketers always loved. We all know that when we you know, call a customer by their name, they really develop a passion or they like the brand. And um, I think um, for email, we have already done it quite well. Out of like 10 out of 10 emails that we receive these days have our names there. The same is done with, I would say, uh, with uh, display ads, with dynamic creative optimization the right set of ads are served to the right customer based on data. That's like the level one that we have already achieved. Coming to level two, you know, things become interesting. Is, is video personalization new? I would say it's not new. Facebook has been doing it for very long. You, you remember those uh, uh, Facebook posts which comes up telling that 10 years before you had a friend, you, then they have a very nice music and we, we post it. The Facebook has been very nicely doing it for years. But over, over the time, what has happened is brands have started using it. But personalization as, at, at a scale is not easy, right? We need uh, a lot of tech in, the, in, in this entire game. And the good news is there, is, there are techs. So I would say the level two of this is, uh, uh, you know, where there are template-based videos in which you can quickly send to the customer thousands of them at one click, where we wish them, like, 
uh, you know, happy Diwali kind of a thing. It becomes more interesting when we create applets or applications and give the power to the customers from a brand that why don't you send it to your friends, like WhatsApp messages, everything, right? So that was the level two. And oh, one more point, like the entire canvas has changed. Initially, the canvas was more like a landscape mode. Now the canvas is a vertical mode, right? So everything that worked before might not work now. Level three is what I would say is one of the most interesting and my personal favorite is AI and avatars taking over the things, right? So what is an AI avatar? AI avatar is actually uh, a replica of a real person. So I, Saikat, or Bharat can create their AI av avatars in 15 minutes. There are websites available. And that AI avatar can speak hundreds of languages in, in as many dialects as possible. So think of that power. Any CEO can send a message, a personalized one, looking the same to all his customers. But is it the best thing? Probably not. There's also a darker side of it. The darker side is, uh, I would say, this synthetic media or defake is something which is, which is of concern. Right? We see uh, AI avatars of, 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 of the US president have been created. The recent, recent war between the two countries, we have seen their presidents. AI avatars have been created to propagate message. So yeah, AI is interesting, but at the same time, have to be used with caution. Clearly, I think we all know how tech is becoming a crucial part uh, in any form of marketing that we are doing, whether it's video, social, or any sort of personalization that we are driving in. And uh, while we're talking about the MarTech, uh, from a tech point of view, one of the key disruptions that we are seeing right now happening in the digital industry, I'm sure you, most of you are aware about the changes what iOS did around the privacy, uh, which is also making, I would say, internet more private. Uh, consumers are concerned about how the data is being shared with brands, with marketers. So we are clearly seeing the disruption happening in the privacy-first approach. And when we're talking about privacy-first, I think at the same time, you as brands are also facing challenges in terms of the measurement, uh, how the consumers are not allowing you to get into that connection mode. Uh, so maybe I would love to understand from you, Datare, considering Brightcove is actually sitting into the center of this whole MarTech aspect. So how you're helping brands when they want to connect with their consumer in a direct relationship, helping them more on the first party data aspect? Very good question, uh, Bharat. So uh, today we have seen like uh, cookies has played a major, major role for marketers or brands, right, to gather a huge amount of data. And brands were busy utilizing those particular data. So rather than utilizing, uh, like creating experiences on your website or app where your customer should engage. Because I feel like uh, convergence only happen when the customer will spend more time on your website or your app, right? So that's where marketer role is to have create content based on your product. If your product is more complex, you should make it simple through a video content. For example, let's take one, we have one of your customers, Evo.com. So Evo.com is an online reseller for white goods in uh, America, Europe, right there. So where we have seen, if most of the guys are not aware about which refrigerator should buy, right? Why, and which are the things we should consider before buying that refrigerator, right? So Evo.com obsessed with helping customer to buy or uh, to help which product they should buy through a 24 by 7 live channel where their expert is talking about, okay, these are the important picture, you should talk about this with right rating, you'll have this particular volume, so that it makes a prospect to take an easy decision, right? And we have seen, if you are going for online shopping, right, and your all queries are not answered, right, and if you buy that particular product, right, so you'll be unhappy, and which leads to high return of a sale, as well as a low NPU score, net promoter score. Right? So that's why we feel right. marketers in today's era should create engaging experience, should go direct. So another example I wanted to create uh, when I say, uh, want to give is, if most of you must have done shopping on Mintra, right? So Mintra has created a Mintra studio. Or if you are buying, let's say, outfit, or let's say you are buying gown, along with picture, you have seen that video will play over there. So that has helped Mintra to reduce massive return. How it reduce massive return? So let's say one of, let's say, female buying the outfit where she can see, okay, how that uh, she will look in that particular outfit through that 360 degree video. So video is helping 
to uh, like uh, conversions as well as the engagement, right? That is point one. Second, we have created when we are creating engaging experiences like Mintra Studio. Mintra Studio is like own Instagram over there, right? It will be run on web as well as on app. Where you are, uh, you what you are doing is you are diverting the entire prospects from social media to your, your own app, own website. So let's say one like guys are there, they are surfing it. Something they like, we have created. Let's say uh, you can give the facility with CTR. They can okay buy now. As soon as they click it, it will redirect to the post so that conversion will happen. So it's very important for marketers in today's era to focus on creating engaging experiences. That experience you can create on either website as well as app. So that you can play a very crucial role in consumer buying cycle or different phase of buying cycle. Right? Rather than today we have seen a website, right? It's due respect to our <laughs> brands, but most of the website today is like a menu card, right? So there is no interactivity, no communication, right? Other day, like we were just talking before, right? If you help uh, prospect in their buying journey through that particular video and video is the most consumed media and through third party research we have seen 90% of engagement happens on video compared to 10% on text. So video is playing very crucial role in today's era for most of the marketers as well and CMO again spending uh, like a lot of uh, you can say time and energy because they have highlighted digital marketing is one of the key aspect in today's era though TV channels or broadcast still leading the but Digital marketing is going to be a very strong communication challenge in coming year. And from digital marketing, video plays a very crucial role because marketers, CMOs are selecting video as a strong content for return on investment. Indeed. Yes. I think the ROI factor is also one of the aspects where brands do see if they're doing video marketing year on year, I think they'd see a tremendous growth happening, not just from a brand recall, spont analysis, but end of the day, it actually help you unlock an incremental audience base as well. And while we do understand uh, the next section, we also wanted to focus more on the content or the creator economy, I would say. And uh, everyone sitting in the room, uh, you must be having your cell phones in the pocket, which has actually given the power uh, nowadays for everyone to become a creator of that production quality, create your own reel, and uh, drive that efficiency and effort, whether you want to do it for a brand or for yourself as a brand. So interestingly, I think we have Amit on the panel and I would love to understand Amit from you uh, from OPPO strategy point of view or what is your opinion in your experience like how you have seen uh, a brand like OPPO which would definitely be focusing on Gen Z audiences, a mix of all these affluency. So how you are leveraging video and most importantly what's the measurement strategy that you follow as a brand? Sure. Hello. I think uh, as a marketers, uh, we are uh, very fond of, you know, in, uh, having consumers spend a lot more time uh, either with our uh, video assets or on the website, right? So we all are obsessed with increase in time spends. Uh, at the same time, I think the nature of the platforms are such that uh, we are uh, uh, video consumption behaviors. People are consuming maybe more than 30 minutes. Uh, 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 of the content, video content on the apps, on the short video apps, uh, maybe it's Instagram Reels or Mojo or, or whatnot, right? So, uh, and at the same time, the, the overall uh, uh, attention span of that user is not more than eight to 10 seconds. So as a brand, it basically a huge uh, challenge uh, and uphill journey for us. And we have to actually acknowledge that, uh, the nature of the platforms and the consumer behavior. And while at OPPO, we understand these uh, insights of the platform and how people uh, consume their content uh, online. And, uh, and for us, I think what has worked is delivering uh, uh, small packages uh, of, uh, uh, of the brand messages uh, mixed with a lot of entertaining content, which is uh, fueled with sometimes with the trending topics online or, of course, with the collaborations uh, with our um, uh, creators, uh, uh, influencers uh, on uh, on the space. Uh, case in point, I can I can uh, uh, probably give you an example where we launched our latest product uh, F21 uh, Pro series, uh, which is uh, have a brand ambassador Varun Dhawan, and uh, for the first time it was uh, tried in the industry that we launched that on his birthday. And uh, his birthday is usually a trending topic because there's a lot of parties happening in Bollywood around it, right? So we use that momentum uh, uh, of that birthday party and involved our users to kickstart a UGC campaign, which basically led to creation of a lot of content. Uh, at the same time, people were spending a lot of time on our channels to view that content coming from straight from their, from their uh, 
celebrities that they follow. So I think that's one of the key areas of, for us to merging the uh, a topical train uh, with the right format and the, and the brand messaging, of course, uh, interspersed in between and not intrusive enough. So for us, uh, I think if I can deliver you a product launch message with a, with a uh, probably a trending topic and you consume that content and have a top of the mind recall, that's actually half battle won for me. So that's what I think uh, from a ROI perspective, we uh, kind of uh, 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 do, uh, do leverage these kind of trends a lot. And uh, I think taking uh, the second part of the question on the, on the measurability, right? Uh, I think uh, we all are using a lot of able software to kind of track end-to-end -end journeys, but uh, our focus uh, is to also kind of learn from our own data that we kind of uh, uh, have from a lot of sources. And uh, the system is such that a lot of data or inputs come from uh, uh, while you're using your smartphones as a device, right? And while we have equipped pe people to, with, a, with a really able cameras these days, right? So uh, I think uh, what we are also uh, encouraging uh, people is to, you know, be smart with their smartphones as well. Uh, case in point where uh, people, uh, we, we would know, right, when you are clicking good pictures and you need to click good videos and share it with the world. And we uh, basically have enabled that content ecosystem on a, through our Instagram channels, for example, right, where uh, we teach smartphone photography through top photographers in India. Right? And while we did that initiative uh, as, a, as a learning that people wanted to explore smartphone photography, but that has become an able tool for us to re-engage and retarget the audience and bring them back into the purchase funnel as well. So uh, while you are consuming uh, probably or uh, searching for a camera related uh, features of my product, I might not show you a, a banner that explain you about my camera specifications, but I might show you a short on together in terms of retweets and everything else around it. Now, how do you kind of build it into each stage of the journey? Uh, insurance, the penetration in India overall for life insurance is less than 5%. To start with, I think the education piece is very big. Uh, both the regulator as well as the life council as well as individual companies keep doing that. And you need to kind of, rather than keep saying, you know, you need insurance, you need insurance, you need insurance, you have to say it in interesting and nice ways. Uh, that people kind of find entertaining, right? It should be relevant, it should be either intellectually or you know, sensorially stimulating, and it should have some sort of an emotional resonance. How do you do all of that in 15 seconds or less? <laughs> so I think uh, the, the key element there is uh, have different ways uh, in which your video kind of comes across. Uh, today, thanks to you know, the, the big tech around, you need to kind of optimize for them. So you have, you know, vertical versus horizontal formats. Uh, you have, in fact, even creative guidelines in terms of show the person's face, have a close-up of the eyes to start with and stuff like that. Everything that Google and Facebook tells you for a creative optimization score. So you started doing some of those things. Uh, in further, you know, when you're kind of serving these videos, uh, apart from, you know, your own data and CDP of what people liked and didn't like, you started moving to what are called as content graphs rather than, you know, just social graphs. Uh, so it's segmentation based on who liked what and what common content they, they consume, right? Uh, then coming to, you know, the actual buying process and stuff, because insurance, you know, it's, it's not an over-the-counter product. You kind of, uh, it's the only, I, I think it's the only product where you pay money and then, you know, you fill a long form. They ask you a lot of details in terms of, you know, documents to be submitted. Then they may, may ask you to go for medicals and then you wait for your product to come. <laughs> so at each stage, there's a high drop-off how do you kind of make interactive videos, uh, which A, explain to people what the next stage is like. So it's very much like saying, here's your cab, here's where it's coming to, or you know, here's your food and you know, here it's where it's getting delivered. But um, with a little more you know, uh, explanation because uh, there are various stages in it. And at each stage you can have more interaction where you, know, you have interactive videos where people can upload documents and things like that at each point. Uh, overall, when we kind of look at the use of it across the funnel, you see almost a 20 to 25% reduction in cancellations. At least that's what we've observed at HD.